I got cornered by three of my sixth grade students at lunch today and they came up to me all excited. They were like, Miss Collins, Miss Collins, what's your sexuality? And I said, why do you need to know that right now? Um, and they were like, oh, I don't know. I just think you'd be like a super fun, like bi or pan person. And I said, well, I don't really know how much I'm allowed to talk about this to students, but um, does looking at my shoelaces help? And these kids just flipped out. They were so excited. You'd look so much better if you weren't fat. You know what? I'm fat with the F-A-T and fat with the P-H-A-T. You're sick. You're sick. I'm gonna get you. Big bitch cannonball. Um, I've said this before, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I think everything that intersectional feminism believes in, I believe in. But I think intersectional feminism is for white women. Because personally, I think the idea of me being an intersectional feminist sounds dumb. I find it offensive that in order to know that I'm included in being represented within a movement, I have to add an adjective to the main idea of that movement. If I have to add a descriptor to the title or label that comes with a movement in order to specify that I'm fighting for all people, I don't want to be a part of that movement. Like, by saying you're an intersectional feminist, especially as a person of color, as a woman of color, you're literally admitting that feminist alone does not imply the kind of work that I want to do when it comes to society. And that's a big deal to me. Not everyone doesn't think like this, and I don't think everyone should think like this. This is just my thought process and why I don't identify as an intersectional feminist, and I don't like it when people tell me to. Thanks for your comment. So my approach to making up for time as a TERF involves a few different things. The first step is of course cutting all ties with the TERF community. Unfollowing all the social media profiles, deleting your gender critical side blog, leaving the discussion groups, all of that. Your goal is to leave the echo chamber as completely as possible. Next step is to begin the process of unlearning TERF ideology. This means doing some reading, engaging with other branches of feminism and transgender studies. The time this takes is going to correlate with how long you were in the community. For me, I was in there for about one to one and a half years, and it took me about two years to fully debunk the turf ideas I had in my head. During this time, you should be taking a back seat during feminist discourse. Now is not the time to be educating others. You should be listening, learning, and reflecting. You should also prioritize being a better ally to trans people. This may mean boosting and supporting the content of trans creators, retweeting and donating to GoFundMes of those who may need assistance, calling out transphobia when you see it in real life as well, or maybe even organizing with trans rights groups. This isn't a definitive list, but I think it's a good place to start. Do I say my name weird? Hey there, hi, my name is Mercury. 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 Do I say it weird? Mercury. Mercury? Do I say it weird? I was in the fourth grade the first time I asked to shave my legs. By age 10, the media had already primed me with the concept of infantilizing women and femme-presenting people. Well, what do I mean by infantilized? I mean the expectation and the beauty standard to look childlike. Look in a magazine. These women are hairless. They are posed childlike with an absent gaze on their knees, often infantilized. And the problem that I have here among many is that fourth grade me already thought that I didn't look young enough. I knew that it was okay for men to perceive me in a way where I needed to look clean shaven and young. And this is really dangerous, this infantilization and perpetuation that looking young is the standard. This is why we grow up and then realize that we were being groomed. We thought it was okay. <laughs> talk about wanting to like abolish the police and then people are like well who are you gonna call if you get attacked or raped or stalked and a lot of leftist women are like not the police I am 
too young to decide that I never want to be pregnant, but an 11 year old is not too young to have a pregnancy forced upon her. Okay, so I posted this video on September 4th and over 200 women have commented since then with their shared experience of finding it extremely difficult to find a doctor who would perform a tubal litigation without some bullshit set of requirements or hypothetical what ifs in order to do so. A couple women, however, commented um, that they had no trouble at all. In fact, they were mentioning to other commenters saying, you know, I don't believe you, this can't actually be a thing because I had no trouble at all. One woman even said that her procedure, no pushback, no issue from her white male doctor. And when I looked, um, she was a woman of color. Another woman commented that she also had no trouble and so this couldn't possibly be the norm. Um, and when I went to her page, I noticed that she was an indigenous woman. Now, I could be completely incorrect in the case of these specific women, but in general, I'm not. Many studies have shown that stratified reproduction is alive and thriving in the United States, all right? I have highlighted the specific literature. Um, if you wanna read more, I encourage you to do so, but the spark notes, black and indigenous women are, and have been for a very long time, more likely to be sterilized than non-Hispanic white women. Um, Again, I could be way off base in the cases of these specific women, so I'm not calling them out, um, but I do have a feeling that their successes in procuring the outcomes they wanted was less about happening across a super progressive feminist doctor and more so these women were in fact the victims of eugenics, okay? Remember, they want the white babies to be born. They want the white babies to be born. Please remember that reproductive rights are directly tied to systemic racism and on a smaller scale, classism. This country, the United States, thrives on rich white women breeding. So if your doctor is refusing you reproductive choice, ask yourself why. If your doctor is all too eager to give you that choice, ask yourself why. You wanna march on October 2nd in your red cloak? Let's remember the most unrealistic part of that show was that Moira was given the choice the choice to become a handsmaid. In reality, she would have been killed immediately, okay? Let's not pretend Gilead would have found babies of any shade other than Lily White acceptable. How are you doing today, Jasmine? But you did this for what? Why not? Why? Why not? <laughs> Why though? If your feminism doesn't include women of color, especially black, indigenous, queer, trans, and disabled women, honey, that's not feminism. So according to my previous post about my book recommendations, I feel fully responsible to address this issue. As you can see, Florence Givens is getting away using the same concept of the original book of the amazing writer Chidera. Again, black queens are not getting the credit they deserve and we need to speak up. I came to my activism when I realized that the world around me won't change until I do. So I started to work on myself, work on what I didn't like, refine what I did like, and I think the best way to become the person that can go for it is to just believe that you're worth trying. Middle class white girls are the least likely to be openly angry. And in the book, she explains how distancing yourself from the emotion of anger is really necessary to maintaining standards of femininity built around relative helplessness, vulnerability, and passivity. But this type of femininity can be easily weaponized because the need to protect white women portrayed as frail, innocent, and defenseless is a centuries-old justification for terroristic racist violence. And this reminded me of a video I saw that a black man made where this white woman was walking ahead of him and he paused to wait to let her get more ahead of him because he knew that she had the potential to call the police on him. And because of how white women are viewed as so frail and in need of protection, the police will use this as justification for police brutality or locking black people up. All right, so quick trigger warning here because I am going to be talking about this with the roles reversed. So you want to take a young boy permanently brain damaged due to continuous lead poisoning who was consistently being essayed from the time that he was nine by his father's live-in girlfriend and self-proclaimed stepmother all through his childhood and teenage years. She gets herself pregnant by him when he's 17. She forces him to marry her. They move into a house and she gets herself pregnant by him three more times and they're all girls. 
and him through all of this consistent poisoning and abuse, he unalives his three daughters because he's afraid that they're going to grow up to treat men the exact same way that his wife did. Yeah, I would talk about it the exact same way because it's the same kind of abuse. Gender doesn't matter. I'm not biased. Have a wonderful day. Random, potentially terrifying thought that may or may not be a good book or movie idea. Oh, my eyes. If women were to ever coordinate a mass genocide against the opposite sex, there's really nothing we could do about it because they all know there's at least one moment when we are completely vulnerable and we'll do anything and everything to keep ourselves in that state of mind where we will probably get murdered in this fictional story world that I'm making up right now. Let me give you a hint. Gone Girl. Basic instinct. <laughs> So let's not provoke them into that. And let all men be feminists instead. Our very lives may depend on it. Stop tone policing women is the name of my crystal quartz and aquamarine necklace. It's 20% off today with promo code STFUFORST. In fact, everything in my shop today is 20% off with that same promo code. You can thank Forrest for that. I used to be an asshole, but I moved forward. Now I'm a cunt.